I working a long time in Japan, almost 15 years, and I was working mostly and still working on analysis of EEG signals, but also NIRS and fMRI and partially MEG. So we developed many algorithms for blind source separation, you know, like independent component analysis. And uh, in last three or four years, we found that maybe we try also to contribute something. So I was curious how our algorithm work for BCI. And we started to control some small wheelchair, just three commands, forward, left, right, and also in virtual reality to drive a car. We have some wheelchair, motorized wheelchair, and we control this. And most of colleagues try, and to some extent it was, we were successful. So this was some kind of motivation or reinforcement learning to do more in this direction. So now we have two kinds of platform. One is used for control of wheelchair, and another one is to use the same robot arm, which deliver food or drugs or drinks. Mm, so we think that this technology maybe in the future would be useful not only for people who have problem with brain, but also elderly people who have problem with movement. Of course, it's the, the working reliability, so everybody emphasized this, uh, and I think we need you know, definition of BCI, I agree with Professor Putscheller that two conditions should be satisfied, not offline analysis, but real time and neurofeedback. So we need to develop system which is not have works on binary system, yes or no, or left, right, but we need multi-command systems which um, work in real time. And of course, in the first step, such system should work well for normal healthy subject. After this, we should try this for partially paralyzed people. The biggest challenge is how to record uh, the brain signal in non-invasive way. Uh, probably 90% of researchers use EEG, but I believe that other modalities are very important. So, so Due to this, we use multi-subject and multi-task and multi-modality. By multi-modality, I understand that we use not only EEG, but also fMRI, NIRS, I mean near infrared spectroscopy, and also um, uh, some peripheral signals. So recording of EMG or EOG, electroculography or electromyography is also important. And I understand that um, brain-computer interface is part of human-computer interaction. We expect that in the near future, human-computer interaction will be probably new revolution. So we, do, we will not need keyboard. We will communicate with our computer or with robots, our agent, by voice control, by um, body language, by, by mimic, by gesticulation, and also by brain signals. I believe that communication with, with, with not necessarily computer, but with machine, which help you like robot or robot arms, uh, will, will be much easier and more intuitive. So, okay, the last 50 years or, or, or 30 years, we use keyboard, mouse, and joystick. I, I think in the next few years, we will don't, don't use these things, or we don't need to use them <laughs> in the future. Japan is a little isolated because we, we have not so strong collaboration with Europe till now. Uh, but uh, of course, it's a lot of interest mostly in non-invasive due to ethical reason. Although some groups also work, uh, ex make experiments on animals like monkey, electrocorticogram and so on. So uh, I, I think that Japan have very good technology. So, you know, my experience with Japanese is that they have a lot of uh, good technology, especially in electronics, and they, have, they are also very good in, in development of software. So it's probably we should expect that also Japanese scientists contribute a lot in, in this field. Of course, the now dominated group is two, two regions, Europe 
and and um, uh, United States. But I think Japan, China, Korea, also in the near future, we should expect they contribute in this field. I agree with most of the experts here in this conference that probably application for rehabilitation, especially after stroke, is very challenging but also exciting field of application. But I strongly believe that the future of BCI depends how big market will be. At the moment the market is not big. So if BCI also go in direction of game industry or entertainment and many young, strongly motivated people try to use this and try to improve this and market improve. So this would be flow of new money and probably also the, the new motivation. Both are important because both contribute to understanding of the brain. Why I am personally excited about BCI? Because BCI is, can be considered as some kind of new paradigm in neuroscience. This is what kind of information really I can extract using non-invasive scalp EEG. But of course the key factor is to, to make big progress in, in brain, brain computer interfaces to understand how the human brain wo really works. So we would like to understand the higher mechanism or higher function in the brain. One is brain to brain interface. What is, we call this <laughs> simply B to B, but this not mean business to business, it mean brain to brain. So how two person click to each other, how they understand. So, so we simultaneously record the brain activity of two or three subjects who participate in some social event like discussion or observe some sport events or video clips or hear their favorite music and and I'm interested what kind of information flow is between these people how these people click how they mutually understand so we call this social brain usually scientists have interest which part of the brain is connected with each other, so you know, functional or anatomical func uh, connectivity. But here, we, the, this can be extended to the concept of social brain, when we look connectivity between two different brains, in the sense how the two persons can match to each other, in the sense that they have the same opinion, the same idea, or they like the same things, or like completely different things. So this is one, so hyperscanning is one idea. Another is, uh, we, we just discussed before <laughs> this interview about detection of human emotion, to classify emotion, and also visual EEG data. So we would like in real time, for feedback purpose, to visualize the brain signals in specific frequency band. So we visual this in the form of some color graphics, and this allow us to develop maybe new multimodal neurofeedback. So not only, you know, visual representation of brain signal, but also auditory. So sonification of EEG signal, but also we can convert this to some vibrotactile vibration or some kind of massage. So this feedback could could also contribute maybe in the future to BCI. So also, I'm, as I mentioned you before, I'm interested also in aging of the brain. So for example, how to find some functional changes in the brain during aging or people with dementia. If we can predict some kind of mental diseases like Alzheimer before clinical onset. So we now very extensively work on this that we would like to make early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease before any clinical symptoms on basis of just EEG signals, so very cheap, easy screening. But this is of course mm, very loosely connected with mm, current trend in BCI, but I think if we want to make progress in BCI, we must mm, also go beyond BCI. So mm, social brain, hyperactivity, emotion. So I like very much the idea of Professor Furtscheller, uh, hybrid BCI and also effective BCI. I think they, they have great future. I don't care what is strict definition of BCI. I, I, I want to develop system which use all possible biological signal, not necessarily only brain signal, but also 
uh, also signals like EMG or um, eye blinking or eye movement or uh, mimic of my face or gesticulation to communicate with machines. So, so I think we should use all possible uh, biological or bio uh, the physiological signal to 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 communicate with computer or machine. Japanese society is very exciting. You, we have recently an NH program and my colleague, student who presented today, he, he showed some, some very short video clips, was presented something like 60 or 20, maybe, maybe two minutes, and he, robot arm, delivered him food and drinks, and after this, many, many uh, Japanese colleagues to us and congratulated us, they say, oh, you make great work, elderly people will need this in the future, so, so, I, I don't know what is the general public opinion worldwide, but in Japan or in China, the people are very exciting and very supportive. So not only top researchers who have some big vision, but also the master student and PhD student, this is the driving force for progress for BCI. So, of course, they should have freedom to develop idea, but of course they should not ignore pioneer work of Professor Vidal or Professor Furzeller group and so on. They should know the basis and knowledge and they, they should also work deeply, so not only stick in, in BCI, but go beyond BCI, so like emotion, hyper-scanning, uh, social brain, and understanding the, the same higher function of the brain is important. So they must really be adopt to very complicated, they, they learn many fields to be successful.